All right, this is the entrance. Zoro always thinks I'm bringing more food. This end is dirt. The base is dirt. Um, they've brought gravel down as they walk because here's, here's where the road makes gravel part of the track is. So as they walk down, sometimes they track some of the gravel. And then here's one feed station. So I have these finished rubber mats. Um, my dad had a boarding barn and when he sold it, I it wasn't being used for horses anymore. So he let me come in and take a bunch of the mats. Um, then I pound a T-post through there and then I just tie, as you'll see here, the hay nets to the bottom of the T-post like so. That way they can't drag these nets down to the other end where there's sand. And it gives them a little something to pull against while they're eating it. And the, my ponies paw the nets to get the hay out. And you can see that by pawing, he gets some of this loose hay that he can nibble. And he also nibbles through the net, like so, like grazing. So that's feed station two. Here's feed station three. I've put out these um, bu uh, buckets and bowls around the track, and then I put uh, random herbs in there. So sometimes I'll put little food here on this little <laughs> rock, too. Um, as you can hear, the chickens are in the middle. That was not by design. Um, I did not have chickens when we built this track, and then when we got the chickens again, we needed a place to keep them where they would be know contained and this was already fenced so we add a chicken wire and just put them in the middle it's actually worked really good my original plan was to put a pond kind of thing at the end there dig a pond and have a water feature and then plant trees on this end um, and then eventually pull the fence down and the horses would just kind of keep going around and then they'd have the pond and the trees but I think what I'll do is plant some juniper trees down at that end this year to add something to the middle and that way, if we ever don't live here anymore and somebody wants to tear this middle part down, it'll still be nice with the trees and stuff in there. So, um, something else that I did when I designed this track is I made it so these, this section opens and straight across that is a gate as well. So that when you swing that open, you swing that gate open, you lock this end of the track off. You swing this gate in and then Zorro is and Oliver can just stay down at this end while we work at this end of the track. I did design it that way on purpose. I wanted, because we get a lot of snow and I wanted the Bobcat to be able to get in and drive straight through if we needed to do some plowing, get in and turn and drive up here and plow if we needed to plow this area. Now we're coming down to the part of the track that I call the beach and this is where the sand is. As you can see, this sand has been here for two years and it's not very deep. So I need to have more sand delivered this year. I'm gonna do that probably next month. Have a big truck bring in some more sand and we'll spread that with the Bobcat. Uh, they like to lay down here in the in the sunshine and soak up the sun. And here's our little shed. This did blow over this winter, and it you can see the back fence. It smashed up the back fence pretty good. Um, the shed itself, only damage it had was this part. A T post. The T post went through that part, but it doesn't affect the shed too much. Otherwise, the shed held up perfectly well. So it was anchored by these t-posts before and it simply lifted straight up off the t-post and then p it picked up and moved about five feet back and then fell onto the fence so that was 70 mile an hour wind gusts that we were having that day that lifted it up we have further anchored it with more strapping um, and then we strap the backside down low or hoping that would help hold it down when the wind blows. This is something we put up yesterday. It was laying here and it, it's no good to them laying down. They can't get leverage on it. So we, I dug this post hole by hand by myself and then Craig got the bobcat and picked this up. It's a street sweeper. So you can see it has this metal in the middle. That That's how, uh, what, how it went onto the machine. So it just slides over this post and it's sturdy, heavy duty, sturdy deal. 
so they can rub they can get their butts up on that and really scrub it themselves so um, this is kind of what I consider like the lounge area down here and then they have salt this also is a gate that opens to get the bobcat in and out water they have wind break down here if the wind's blowing from the south they have lots of wind breaks out here so originally we were going to put rails up here so the ponies didn't push on the shed but they haven't bothered the shed so we've just kind of not finished that now we are back to the front again the new section i think we added this last year so little gate i made this gate by myself <laughs> i'll tell you what you guys I always say it, but I am the queen of redneck. This is just an old pallet that I took apart and then I screwed it all together <laughs> to make this gate. But you know what? This gate has lasted, I think it's about 10 years old now. So, and I had a big horse when I made it, so it's not too shabby. All right, so I forget how big this is. I think I have it in another video. I'll look it up. It's supposed to be like a, a play arena. So it's actually been really handy. This is road mix. Um, so it's sand and gravel, and then it hard, it's hard. It's a nice hard base. Um, it drains really well. It does not get muddy. In the winter time, I can get the poop off of this. Um, it doesn't freeze solid to this, to this base. In the winter time, I cannot get the poop off the dirt. It's frozen solid to the dirt, and unless I use a pickaxe, I'm not getting it up. I can get the manure up down in the sandy area. So something to know as far as base goes, um, road mix, gravel, sand mix, and sand make a great base for being able to pick up the manure. Um, and then, so I had this like a little arena here and then I made this little pen just in case I got, had horses come in that needed to be separated or I got a new horse, which at the time I didn't think I was going to get a new horse. I made this corner of the feed station in here. And then I just put a bucket of water over here. But of course, oh, I did get a new horse. I got myself a little baby. Hello, baby. You just in here taking your nap? That is a good boy. You guys, that's the sweetest baby there ever was. Unless he's biting me in the butt. Yeah, you do that. You bite me in the butt. <laughs> so this shed... I put hay in here we and it actually makes it really warm in the winter and then there's chicken food in the back and the bins in the back and then there's a uh, salt block on the back wall there which is nice they have one that's not out in the weather so it stays this salt block lasts forever in here um and then this shed the footing is um a deep mix of road gravel again but it's some of this looser gravel from our driveway is in here um, because this must have all been a parking area at some point so I keep this bedded deeply with sawdust because I don't want them walking around on all those big yucky rocks their feet are just too small oh he's so tired you don't have to get up baby <laughs> he's so cute you're so adorable he looks like a little Shetland, doesn't he? He's so handsome. All right. So Oliver stays over here during the day because I just make sure he has hay all day long and pellets. It takes him a really long time to eat his breakfast. So I just decided to start putting him in here. Then in the afternoon, I open this up and they have the run of the whole thing. And Oliver spends lots of time galloping around and around and around the track. So that's pretty fun. This shed my husband built quite a number of years ago, maybe it's almost 10 years ago, for my big horse that I had at the time. Um, it's been moved around quite a bit, and as we have rearranged and made things better, it's held up well. This was originally a goat shed turn chicken shed and I'm going to show you the inside of that and we laugh about this thing you guys it's so redneck it's just made out of pallets and I'll tell you what making a shed out of pallets is really hard because they are not all the same size so yesterday we put these roosting poles poles up just scraps from around the farm so PVC a nice branch I found and then this other dowel we screwed them on so they don't fall and then the chickens come in and out that door 
So, um, here's their little, oh, look at the girls in there. Their little nesting box. Everybody likes to be in there together. Good girls. This one wants to lay an egg. And now we lifted it up on these posts. So now I can actually walk in there and stand up, which will be really nice this winter for keeping it cleaner. So my husband built this shed too. Not too bad, even though it's pretty dang redneck. It stays warm with the heat light in there. And he built this little ramp outside. And then this summer, I said, I'll plant some junipers down there and maybe some sage bushes. I know that's weird, but just to kind of fill it in and give the girls something to do in here. And I'm thinking about that end of the track, um, rototilling up down there and planting some bushes and stuff that the ponies can browse through the fence. So as the bushes grow, their leaves come through the fence and they can browse along there, kind of like a hedgerow. I'm just doing research right now about what would be best to grow in our area and best for them for that kind of a purpose. So. All my gates are um, latched, except for the front gate, with these, they're just bucket hangers from Murdoch's or the, you know, feed store. That gate over there has, it has one, the gate into Zor or Oliver's pen, both gates have one. And then this one is a chain. And then yesterday, handsome hubby took the bobcat and just dug in right here. He took in about eight inches probably and then we re we backfilled it with some of the sand and gravel that is here underneath these mats to make it m more level. And then what I can do, and you can see it holds water, I'm going to run the hose in here and put the boys in here. I'll tie a hay net to the post and just loosely tie them to the panels. And they can stand and soak their feet a couple times a week. Um, their feet get hard and dry in the summer here. It's so dry and arid. It's called high desert. And so um, I need to be able to soak their feet a little bit in order to do a good trim job in the summer. They get hard as rocks. So I think that's a good solution. We'll see how it works. I'll let you guys know. And this is the other entrance into the Penzoros, or Oliver's Inn, and this is the little man gate. Here is uh, the second doorway into the hay shed, and I'm gonna ask my husband to build a door, a, a hinged door, so I can access the hay from here and not have to do it from inside the shed. I think that'll be a little bit easier. Here's my tie wall. So I have three rings on this side. I usually tie one horse to the middle ring, and then I put, I hook a feeder over this, and I put loose hay or pellets in there, and they can eat that before we work. And then my husband just added this um, rail on this side, so I could tie Zorro or whoever on this side to the middle with a hook over bucket, and, he, and that pony can stand on this side because um, they were just close enough that no matter how short I tied them on one on one end and one on the other, somebody could get loose enough to go over and eat the other one's feed. So having them on the same side just didn't work. It's just a simple little two two posts, some pallet. This is just pallet wood. You can see the nails. It's just pallet wood. And then a couple of uh, two by sixes nailed to the posts. And I actually did this all by myself, except for my husband did these, but I built the main wall all by myself. So super easy, you guys, if I can do it. And I just bought a bunch of these little screw on ties. They work really good for the ponies. And then I have my other feeds in here. So I hang nets there. These are, um, this one is the leftover oats from when Zorro was getting stuff from the vet and wouldn't eat it. He was eating it better with oats in it. This is pea protein powder. This is Timothy pellets, but I'm going to switch them to Teff next time. And these are alfalfa pellets for Oliver. And this little thing has gut health and uh, Vermont blend in it and then some psyllium just plain psyllium powder no flavors or anything and then I just have herbs that I take out onto the track and spread for Zorro spread around so and then here is my haystack I can fit three tons in here and about a ton in the smaller shed so I can store about four tons of hay I hope you guys enjoyed this and that I answered any questions I've been getting and if you have any others after this walkthrough, feel free to ask below. Thanks so much for watching.